Okay, hello. Um, so my name is Amrit. I'm the course leader for MA Interior and Spatial Design at Camberwell. Um, we're a course that's been running for a number of, well, 20 years almost in different guises, and I've been running the course for the last five or six. Um, and as James has said, there's lots of information on our website. There's video, a video there, as well as um, other information about what our course, how it's structured and um, the type of things that we do. The video that shows some of the student work and, and again, us talking about um, how the course works and how it operates. We are a um, an experimental spatial practice um, environment we're looking at uh, exploring what what spatial design can be uh, exploring about how people use space at the moment and understand how we can influence that as designers um, and we have students it's a large course we have students from around the world normally about 20 different countries um, and students from very different backgrounds coming so people who've done BAs in architecture or fine art. This year we have somebody who's started as an aeronautical engineer, um, other people coming from landscape, interior design, etc. So a large body of people who come from different backgrounds from around the world who all see the world um, slightly differently. So as a research course, we're looking at observing the world around us, observing what's happening in the world, um, whether it be in a physical space or a virtual space um, and trying to explore what that means and how we can um, understand that in a deeper way in order to create a new type of um, environment and, and take a slow, long, deep look at things. So we, we don't set briefs. We ask students to spend the year um, discovering what they're interested in, defining what the project might be, and then and then slowly moving towards an outcome. So that slowness allows you to spend more time um, exploring the theory and the practice around those things that you're interested in. Um, and again, we vary. The openness of the course means that um, whether you're interested in performance or whether you're interested in uh, design of uh, high-end retail, or you're interested in migrants or uh, particular elements of the environment in cities, all of those are valid types of projects. Um, and we, we allow students to explore those things. Um, we start also from very simple things around you that sometimes it's not always about what's uh, big and special and published. It might be an Instagram post. It might be something that you notice at home. It's about um, looking carefully and thinking carefully about what's happening and how do you start manipulating that. So some of this a couple of years ago with students looking at um, how changes in light or colour in certain things in your spaces might change your domestic environment. This was particularly in a case when... Um, lockdown was there in the pandemic and we were stuck in our in our internal domestic spaces trying to um see it in a different way um we also are very aware that the world changes a lot and it's very complex and it feels like it's becoming less stable but we encourage our students to embrace that confusion or that instability and start looking at how they can be resilient amongst it or how they can use that to their advantage as designers to explore new things. Um, and our idea is that we, we support you and facilitate that confusion because that means you're looking at things in a new way. If you're not confused, it suggests that you're not exploring new ideas and um, looking deeply at things. So we use that as a positive sign that you're you're trying something new and you're you're developing and evolving as a designer. Um, and again, this idea of exploring new things. So again, I'll show you some of the 
uh, types of work that come out at the beginning where it's about exploring what are the things that I'm interested in, what do these ideas mean, how do I start relating different ideas or single ideas to different things, what are the connections between things, and how do you communicate and present that. Um, so this might be a type of work that comes after a couple of weeks on the course where we're right at the beginning of saying what type of project do you want to do. Um, so as I said, this is different from what many of you might have studied as a project brief that somebody gives you. This is about you deciding what you're interested in. And again, different types of drawing, different types of looking, different types of uh, noticing the things around you um, and, and reimagining how you see, see things or how you communicate what you're seeing to other people, whether you think it's important or not. Um, so it's again looking at things that you think you know but maybe you haven't looked at carefully or that you think um it's the kind of everyday environment the things that we do every day the spaces that are around us as well as the more sort of theory and um conceptual areas of work so we're very based in a kind of reality so exploring ideas of, of virtual spaces, game spaces, uh, video spaces, uh, making films, other ways of exploring those things um, around us. But a large part is about discovering what the project is, discovering your own identity, so that when you finish the course, um, you have an individual identity that's recognisable, that your work is recognisable as belonging to you, rather than coming out of a particular course. Um, so again, amongst the large cohort that we have, we see a wide variety of projects presented in a wide variety of places. And it would be difficult for somebody to look at and say, that's come out of a particular type of college. Um, the critical engagement and the exploration it is very much uh, what we do differently from other, other courses, other MAs. Oops. Right. And again, just some other examples of how we start exploring those things. Um, and we also ask students to find what's an appropriate method for communicating. So we don't put uh, rules or parameters about how to present. If you're comfortable with doing drawings or visuals, that's great. If you're comfortable writing, whether it's academically, fiction, poetry, that might be appropriate um, film or performance. We've had students doing performances and filming that. We've had people making documentaries. We've had other people presenting a set of plan sections and elevations in a, in a traditional sort of architectural interior design uh, method. But it's about finding the way which is appropriate for the project that you're doing. Um, again, ways of exploring ways of reflecting on our spaces, on our past, on our personal histories, and recognizing that um, those stories about the places that we've been to or the lives that we've had are also um, relevant to who we are as designers and who we are as an individual. As I said, performance, um, uh, spatial practice is about the relationship between the body and the spaces whether it be groups of people in the underground or on the bus or dances and spaces that we occupy, how you move through a space. We think that, uh, we recognize that a lot of spatial design is about a sort of performance of moving through spaces um, and something we do again every day. So um, dance is quite a, a, a interest in our course. Finding out writing and fiction, um, ways of writing can be um, very evocative and very emotional if they're written in, a, in a, a way like a novel or a short story. So we use those as valid ways of, of exploring what it means to live in a space rather than just a technical description of spaces as a, as a designer. So it's about exploring how we can evoke 
memories and um, responses to spaces by writing about them in a different way. Uh, collections of portfolios would be an outcome. So the kind of collecting research, collecting the things that you're looking at, um, things that worked, things that didn't work, and trying to um, collate those and see where the where your journey comes through. We have to be clear that we are not necessarily um, improve, not taking a BA student and turning them and improving their skills. We improve their skills by, or you improve your skills by going and exploring the things that you're interested in through research. And it's a very much a research driven course. Our students will go out and get jobs in high profile companies. They will go out and be artists and designers who are creating their own path. Um, and it's about that clarity about what you want to do and where your interests lie, rather than um, I'm going to have the same skills as everybody else and I'll try and get a job the same as everyone else. We're trying to just give you an edge that gives you a, a more interesting potential for your future. Um, these are other examples of how we consider materiality, how we consider time, how we consider change over time. Um, some things are more abstract. Again, the physical model, the digital model, um, laser cutters, 3D printers, these kinds of things. Exploring installations as artists might in terms of designing uh, spaces to experience memories or the stimulants, um, in this case, the smelling. Materiality, location, geography, all of these things wrapped up together about students bringing things back from where they visited. Imagining futures which might be like science fiction or or films or something about the future whether that's social change or climate change um, using popular culture to explore ideas about how we live in the world this is a design from a few years ago about creating a uh, a refuge for when you know the zombies take over the world Um, exploring ordinary spaces in new ways, traditional drawings, as I said, but but exploring drawings which uh, or spaces which might not be normally looked at. Students presenting their work as stories, as graphic novels um, of characters using their space or exploring ideas in their space. And again, how we present portfolios and information um and reflect about these things about presenting again stories of personal experience um in spaces digital software explorations about spaces what these new softwares allow us to explore and understand about the world around us writing uh, reading and putting, putting unexpected things in unexpected places, mixing cultures, uh, blending um, digital and physical. Um, this is a, actually a retail project um, about going to your shop and buying things. So that's just a brief summary. As I said, there's some more information on the website, but the reality is that we're interested in why you want to study uh, spatiality what the things that you feel excited about when you look at the spaces around you uh, and we'd like to try and help you explore those things and, and turn those into a, a form of practice that is interesting for you and, and that you would want to continue doing so this is about setting up your um setting up your next steps if not the rest of your life but certainly the beginning of your post education, uh, getting ready for that thing that you do after your education finishes. Um, I think we might go to Sanri first and then maybe we can get questions at the end. Um, so I, I 
shall pass over to Sanri, who's a current student, just finished um, her MA. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, hi, guys. This is Sanrit, and I will just share my screen. Uh, So I'm a current student at the MA Interiors and Spatial Design course. And as Amrit said, I have just like almost finishing. We are actually putting up our showcase uh, next week. And this is a little bit about myself, my background and how I came onto the course. And just, it is more about the process of um, how we were taught on the course and how it helped uh, aid my own practice and how I eventually, came up uh, with my final project. And yeah, here's a sneak peek. Okay, yeah. So I have a background in architecture. I come, I was born and raised in India. I went to uh, the school in Gurgaon for five years. And uh, post that, I also worked in different firms. And uh, at that point, I was more interested to explore different typologies in architecture and design. So which is why I chose uh, different kinds of practices, just to know the kind of work that uh, there was there in the professional world uh, to experience and also to see what is it that I was interested in exploring in the future. And having said that, eventually I did uh, go back to my hometown to set my own practice, which was after a year and a half of working with uh, different people. But uh, at that point, I did realize that working on your own, making these uh, decisions is a much more responsible task uh, of rather than just making something look good, feel good, but uh, I think I discovered that there is a greater responsibility as designers that uh, we must uphold. And also there was this uh, sense of lack of meaning for myself, even though uh, there was a very good uh, educational experience that I had, the kind of exposure I had, and uh, which is why I ended up um, coming to this course. Um, but mostly, why was it different than the other courses that I chose from? Um, firstly, it was a research-based project, a research-based uh, design course, which is very beneficial because even though you, you may come from different uh, skill sets, this course does help you look within yourself and find your own voice which was exactly what I was looking for uh, since, uh, like uh, Amrit just mentioned, that there is no brief. You set your own brief for yourself, which is very different from like a traditional uh, educational uh, setting and uh, which is also kind of daunting because you are also exploring at the same time, not knowing where exactly um, you want to take your project, you know, what kind of direction you want to take your project in. But because the course is designed in a way that it lets you explore different mediums, uh, different philosophical constructs, and at the same time being very relevant to the conversations that the design world is that we are living in and not to base your practice, your expression outside of it, how to engage everything and uh, interweave it together. I think that was what I was looking for. And um, so the coming slides are going to talk about a little bit about my project. And again, the process of where it started from and where it culminated. But mostly I would request you to focus not on uh, the type of things that we are doing, but mostly on the process and how varied it is. And also it's super fun. So which should be super exciting for you. So my MA project uh, is called Residing in Between, Reconstructing Contingencies. It is a spatial inquiries of windows and possible ecologies. I know it sounds complicated. The project is complicated, but um, it is also very simple because 
essentially it is looking at a very small threshold space, which is a window. And the window is used as a spatial construct to look at uh, different themes that I was exploring. And the nature of my practice was super fragmented. Uh, it touched upon very personal themes. Uh, it touched upon social, uh, cultural context, and also how the window in a domestic setting then responds to maybe spatial cues that we have learned to grow up with, but eventually we do not acknowledge it or we forget it, or mostly of how the window behaves and allows for us to exist in different ways and also it's a very symbiotic relationship and all these ideas were then explored in different ways but um, before it reached to this point I was very much interested in exhibition design and more so about the experience the nature uh, of the performance and in a way that is what also happens when we are interacting with uh, our own physical space and in my case the window and uh, this slide is I think from unit one where I had just begun looking at uh, exhibition spaces exhibition designs and this one is from a very famous artist called Anne Hamilton and uh, so discussing these case studies with your tutors uh, especially in my case it was very helpful because we would then uh, deconstruct smaller aspects of what uh, this whole event meant, the design, how it responded, how the person is again interacting and how does then that uh, translate into the spatial experience that the artist was trying to create or it just happens because of the sheer scale or like other things um, that we uh, went on to discuss. But the main learning from this exercise was then because I was then putting myself into different exhibitions that I would go to. And I have been to innumerable, one, innumerable ones um, within this past year. And all of them were very unique and different. And I think, which is what also London as a city does to you because there are these bigger institutes, very small galleries, and uh, there is something for everyone as per your interest. And it all comes down to how curious you are and what is it that you're looking um, to explore. So this just explains uh, my own analysis of being in that space and the other themes that I was then interested in exploring in. And then again, uh, these models were testing those theoretical concepts and how I was then trying to embrace that kind of motion of uh, a viewer being in that space, understanding that. And um, again, this is another one of the models that was again testing similar ideas. And it is also worth mentioning that the course encourages you to um, spend more time on the kind of thought or your learning rather than um, the different aesthetic quality of the models. So you are encouraged to use recyclable materials, which is what it should be. Um, I think in sometimes traditional practices, they focus as, or maybe as students, we try to focus on the aesthetic quality and then we start missing out on the essence. But here it's totally different. And even in the kind of uh, lectures that we were um, that we were introduced to, I think more than accepting what was given our way, we were encouraged to challenge anything that we were taught, uh, even if we were referencing uh, big names in the industry. Like you should not accept everything that has been said or done. Uh, you should know why you're agreeing to something and which which are these small things, but um, they really help you understand yourself and your positionality. And I think that was very good for me. And um, also outside of our coursework, we also had these optional electives. And I was, so we call them communities of practice. And I was part of the film and documentary, and we worked together with the performance group. And um, we would make these performances in our lunch breaks, where the performance group, we would come up with like a very simple rule of how uh, the performers would respond to spatial cues of, let's say, a person coming in or going out. And we would make these invisible thresholds as the boundaries, um, as a rule. 
and then as film students then we would then uh, decide uh, because we were a big group then we would decide how to then capture uh, a live moment like this because then when you're behind the camera and what you then narrate as the story it is very important to design this experience as well so like Amrit said that uh, this course is very open-ended and again different forms of communication are encouraged and this was something uh, okay yeah so the writers collective again uh, this was an open invitation to students from Chelsea, Camberwell and Wimbledon um, and it was essentially an open writers collective where we were 30 students from different courses, BE and MA courses, which was led by uh, two tutors. And it was essentially just an open-ended group where we would come together, discuss our writings. All of us had very unique ways uh, of using writing within our practice or even outside of it. It wasn't about how good you wrote, but it was essentially about how writing can then uh, help feed back into your uh, design practice and um, it it went on over a period of five months we would meet weekly and this was again not part of my course this was something that I did uh, additionally again just because I had been writing and but I never took it in a way that it could then be uh, created into this form and uh, we ended up doing a publication uh, this is a picture of that and with the uh, exhibition event we also had an art installation and where again it, it is a different it's an opportunity for you to then test your interests so I was already doing these things in hindsight uh, which I didn't realize would then uh, how the, the kind of effect that it would have on my final project but I was still doing these things because I was interested in them and also it gives you a good way to uh, mix up with people from different courses and you have these different conversations because essentially it's a design school and in that sense all of the students are uh, engaging with a spatial realm be it um, illustration we had performers uh, we also had writers so but everybody looked at it in a very different way so it, it was very interesting to be a part of this and uh, the coming slides are just about the different polyvocal medium nature of my final project. So this one is a drawing uh, from a very personal experience. And this is a drawing that came up after 10 or 20 previous drawings to this, but this essentially expresses waiting. And uh, even though there is uh, some underlining of my architectural practice, but uh, you have to push yourself uh, to try and do something different and to express a different layer or meaning to the same drawing. Uh, this one again expresses uh, the relationship of body with the window and the outside space. And again, it is a very personal experience of uh, being in a religious uh, place and how the material nature and how when you're seated in a position and you are at a level uh, with the outside is these are all things that we all see and experience but breaking down and observing them for yourself uh, I started constructing these meanings and there was also an exhibition that I constructed in my own house uh, again because of the nature the context of my design and so the shell behaved as one layer and uh, if you see on the diagram on the left there is this film uh, that was projected on a piece of cloth and then you have these two windows on the side and there is like this rolling panel of pictures that I used and I took uh, of like people how they behave in their window spaces and uh, other things which was like a bigger wall display which had uh, which again aided to my whole narrative and this is one shot of the window uh, of the film being projected and the wall display behind and this one is again the rolling panel that uh, my friend here is engaging with and it here even though the pictures are th uh, an object in themselves but it's again that motion that experience of engaging of handling the panel which then makes you 
slow down because obviously it's paper. So essentially you will roll it down very carefully. And the moment you start doing that, the action of doing this then makes you experience uh, the photography in a slower way. So then it, it kind of slows down time. And so it, it is a designed experience. It did not come just out of air. And uh, obviously, th these are small things that come to you, you learn, uh, and then it just becomes a part of you. And um, yeah, just like small learnings like this. And this is another thing, which was, uh, it was a guide to the film that I had presented. But in it, this guide itself is like this multi-directional piece which had these sketches and notes and writings uh, while I was designing the film. So if you see, it, it is an all-rounded culmination of everything that I was doing uh, over the 15 months. And then it just became into this beautiful collection. And it, 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 it is a very wonderful feeling at this point. And I hope you're able to uh, experience it at some point. And yes, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. And I, I think I'll send it back to James now. Thank you, Sanmi. So if anybody has any questions, please drop them in the questions chat. I'm just going to bring up a slide and then I'll check the questions. Um, so you should be able to see that now. Fine. So uh, just to say, just to mention what's on the slide, um, MA Design Show uh, is taking place 29th of November to the 4th of December. That's a Millbank Tower, which is very near Pimlico and Vauxhall stations, tube stations. Um, and it's the MA courses. It includes uh, one from Chelsea and several from... Camberwell. You can find that information on the homepage. If you go onto Camberwell's homepage, uh, webpage, you can see a link to that with the information. Um, and we've added the handle there for our social media channels. I really recommend following the Instagram channel because that has that's updated very regularly. Um, and any questions after this, or if you think of anything further down the line, just email that email address. It comes to my team and we'll make sure it gets to the right person for you.